Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to release the 2024 Fancy Quant Honorable Mentions. Uh, these are the programs I think are some of the best quantitative finance masters in the country here. Uh, the purpose of this is not to rank them in any specific order. You are either a rigorous, well-put-together quantitative finance masters, or you're not. Um, this is not a comprehensive list either. I know many students ask. Um, you probably don't realize, even as students, there are probably over 50, maybe 60, maybe 70 or 80 quantitative finance masters related to the topic in the US alone. Um, again, many years ago I started, there was probably 12, maybe 15. It has exploded over the years, and every single month, students message me saying, Dimitri, can you tell me about this program or that program? A lot of these programs I have never heard of. So this will never be comprehensive, even in the US. Um, being comprehensive now globally, you think about this now globally, many universities are opening programs across the globe as well. This is not comprehensive. Um, the way this program structures and works is that I go out, I find programs I think are going to be good fits of the programs. I send out invitations, this is by invitation only, to be reviewed by me. I send out a standardized list of questions which go out um, to these universities. And if they would like to participate, they fill it out, they send it back, I review it. My focus is going to be on academic rigor and education, um, on job placement in true quantitative finance jobs, not a bunch of other nonsensical fills. And we place very, very little, if not any, uh, probably no weight on salaries because salaries mean absolutely nothing in the quant finance space because um, there are lots and lots of high paying jobs related to quantitative finance and finance in general uh, that aren't quant finance. So why would you go get a master's to study something to go work in another field here? So I take that into consideration. I give no weight to peer review because peer review is a load of crap and it is used by many other rating agencies. And even when I talk to the programs, the number one complaint I get from every other university that is working in this space that's being ranked and doing the competitions here for the rankings, they all complain about the peer review assessment, except for maybe two or three programs here. So why would we include that? Other questions we look at, I actually do look at like lists of courses, textbooks that are used. This is a really big excuse for me to go out and buy new textbooks. Um, this year I purchased Box and Jenkins Time Series Analysis Forecasting and Controls. I've wanted this book for a long time. Uh, many of you don't know I have stacks of textbooks I don't have time to review. But when I actually go and review these programs, I try to get a few additional textbooks because I have a lot of the textbooks these programs are already using. And then I try to find new ones, exciting ones, something that might not be something I would expect, I go, I purchase it, I review it, I look at it, and I try to figure out if these programs are really teaching uh, the core skills and topics needed to work in quantitative finance. New this year to the question list is going to be what have you changed about the program? So I will discuss that as well. The purpose of this video is just to explain the rankings, tell you the programs that have been ranked, uh, maybe give you a few tidbits, but it's not going to great depth on these four programs. So the programs that have made the list in no specific order are going to be Stony Brook University's Master of Science and PhD in Quantitative Finance, Fordham University's Master of Science in Quantitative Finance, University of Michigan's Master of Quantitative Finance and Risk Management, and Carnegie Mellon University's Master of Science in Computational Finance. So to give you kind of a perspective on why I think these programs are good programs, why you should apply to them and who they are for, um, let's start off with the University of Michigan here. University of Michigan, seems to be a very academically focused program. It is very mathematically focused. They focus a lot on the math side. Um, financial engineering masters back in the day tended to be very, very math heavy. Um, over the years, over time as you know, the industry has kind of changed, the jobs have changed, programs have started chasing more of the finance side, the softer side, maybe the program side in quant dev, um, statistics for the research side. University of Michigan though has traditionally stuck to that and 46% of their students have a math degree before they're accepted here. Uh, if you're going to apply to the program, I would highly recommend you look at their prerequisites. They are quite strict on the mathematics required to even get into the program. Um, so be cognizant of that when you apply. Again, this program is really for math students who are wanting to get even more advanced in mathematics. Um, I think it is a good program as well for other majors, but you're going to have to have those math prerequisites as an undergrad, so maybe you have a math minor. This is going to be a very rigorous program in the mathematical side of this. Um, they are expanding their machine learning and finance space here. They brought on Ali uh, Nazari, who 
has been involved with the program, is involved with the old program um, that I was involved with long ago. They started a new program. He is heavily involved and is actually teaching machine learning and AI now for quantitative finance in that space here. Um, they have also added a full-time new career services manager. So in 2018, they were looking for somebody. I was going to talk to them about it. And I was like, I got a real job, you know, doing actual quant finance. I don't need to derail and try to do too many things. Um, and they had not filled that since 2018. I have been criticizing them over the years. And awesome, they now have a new full-time career services manager to help students. So I'm excited to see the feedback from the students um, on that on next year's review to see how that is actually working for them. Um, the other new change to the program is going to be uh, that they are now sending and sponsoring students to go to the International Association for Quantitative Finance, the IAQF's um, National Quantitative Finance Career Fair in New York. Um, one of the big downsides I thought originally Michigan's programs has been over the years is the career services. It looks like they are really trying to push that and up that here. So Again, Math Rigor, Michigan, great program. Career Services has always been weak with the program. They're really pushing that. Now, the next program is going to be uh, Carnegie Mellon, uh, so CMU as we all like to call it. CMU's program is probably the most well-rounded program that I consistently have in this ranking here because they tend to teach at a bunch of different angles. I don't see any specific specialization they have. It seems like they're teaching equal parts of finance and programming and math and stats. And even when you looked at the job placement, so I did a couple of videos on job placement, they gave me a bunch of information and data looking at alumni careers over time, um, looking at new student placement uh, in the first, I think like year or something like that. So we're getting some ideas of the salaries, we're looking at the job titles. They tend to be able to place students though across the board. Uh, so a lot of their students end up going into what I would call front office or is going to be, you know, like more of the analytics, the desk quants, um, doing a more financy job with a little bit less of the rigorous model development. But again, their program, when you actually look at the placements, they tend to be putting students across the board. So front, desk, quants, analytics, more of the financy side. Um, they have actual quants, which I would consider as model developers, model validators. Um, they're putting students into quant dev, which is like HFT and implementation of models here. Um, they're I've seen they have some other things like wealth management, which is really more towards the finance side, depending on the titles and what they're actually doing in that. I believe some had gone into consulting in the past as well. So CMU, I think if you don't know what you want to do, you really like quant finance, um, you're trying to discover the industry a bit more, uh, CMU is going to be a good place to go for that. Um, pieces they have changed here. They have a new executive director who's running the program, who is Robert Simmon. And then also their program has moved, the New York location has moved to 88 Pine Street here. So again, a few structural changes. They're sticking with the same curriculum. Of course, they're always trying to improve classes, teachers update things, for example. Uh, so I think, again, they are well-rounded. They have an interesting background. Uh, the typical student backgrounds that come into this program, there was gonna be about 45% math and statistics, 18% um, business and finance, 15% um, information systems and computer science, 8% engineering, 12% economics, and 2% other. So again, we still continually see in quant finance masters a heavier focus on math and stats, um, which is good. That means we're getting a little more rigor here. We're getting good qualified students. Um, but you are seeing some other unique, diverse backgrounds as well coming into this program. Um, and again, I think the outcomes from CMU is probably going to be the most diverse that you're going to see. Now, Fordham's program is probably the most, un one of the most underranked here. So I'm going to talk about Fordham's and Stony Brook's. I think both of them are very underranked. Location-wise, they're both very close to New York City. Fordham is in New York City. Um, Stony Brook is in Long Island. If you have watched my videos at all, you know being close to the job market makes job placement much easier because you meet people, you network. It's much easier to get you know, good jobs from these sorts of opportunities here. Um, they did not list in this, but I'm going to hit it. Uh, Fordham did a massive uh, you know, conference here with a bunch of leading quants. They brought in some really big names. Um, they had great organizational help as well. A shout out to, I think, Rebellion Research for putting that together. Um, Fordham is really bringing in. So I've criticized most of these programs for career development, um, at least like Michigan's and uh, Fordham's as well. Fordham is stepping up. They're starting to make changes. They're trying to get more action. Um, I know Ching, the program director, um, has trying to be getting 
company projects tied in too. So students are working on real actual data and projects that corporations are using. I think these are going to be great. Um, Fordham is the rising star. They are really starting to make strides and changes and updates. So I'm excited about that. The changes they listed in their review is going to be, they're now adding in an interview process as the application. So when you apply to go to the program, you're going to have to do an interview um, with one of the admission committee members. It is going to be a mix of professional interview questions as well as technical questions. Um, this interview process though, what they're evaluating from the technical point is going to be a familiarity with concepts such as calculus, linear algebra, and probability and statistics. So I keep hitting home. Um, programming is not king in the quant space. That is quant dev. Um, math, stats, and probability. Um, math and stats are going to be the kind of key skills here that we are seeing. That's what real quant finance is. It's developing models, tools, and solutions to solve problems. Um, the other pieces that they have adjusted is going to be the curriculum. They're adding more courses on machine learning and AI. Uh, the classes they have added is going to be advanced machine learning and LLM, uh, portfolio management with AI, cloud computing, and market impact model for optimal trading execution here. So if you don't know, I think Fordham is really going to be that program that is focusing on the math and the stats. Um, also, they're going to be focusing more heavily on the programming side. So if you compare this to Michigan's program, again, I think they're starting to get there academically. I don't think they will ever be so specialized in math um, as Michigan's program, but I do see them being great across the board of math and computer science and programming. Um, I think they're going to be a great fit for both a research job or a quant and dev job. Um, again, the focus here seems to be more on the actual implementation, the, an the analytics here. They're going to be a little bit weaker on the front office, in my opinion. Um, so kind of the financy, fuzzy, uh, touchy-feely courses, they're going to be more focused on the actual model development and the implementation of those models. Um, but again, I think Fordham is a great up-and-coming program. Uh, I think the competition for Fordham's program is going to be less than some of the bigger names like CMU, Columbia, NYU. Uh, again, location's great, curriculum's great, career services seems to really be picking up as well. So I'm excited to kind of see how they're career placement does over the next three or four years here because it's kind of a lagged effect. You can make changes. It takes time to gather an industry to notice um, and to get traction with that. And the last program here we're going to talk about is going to be Stony Brook's. Stony Brook's program, I think, is quite unique just because they also have the PhD here. So if you're really wanting to do a PhD, um, you're not necessarily just wanting to do a master's. You want to go straight from undergrad into that PhD. Um, I think Stony Brook is one of the only, I know Columbia in the past has considered taking on a few PhDs. I'm sure people put it in the comments, people. Uh, the other programs have PhDs. I know people will shout them out. PhDs are not very common. So the fact that they're doing both masters and PhDs um, it's kind of a testament to the program, trying to focus more on the academic side. Uh, that has been one of the complaints as well from alumni and students is going to be that the program is very academic and focuses on the core material. They wish it was a more applied to the industry. Now, if you know anything about my criticism of programs in general, I think most programs spend too much time trying to get an applied version. Um, and by I mean applied version, it's kind of a hand wavy version of things. Stony Brook is anything but that. Stony Brook is really focusing on those core courses. Um, I have officially been spending quite a bit of time looking at their students when I've done hiring uh, in the last couple of years here. The one change they have made this year is they have added a case studies in machine learning and finance course here. So common theme you guys can see, Michigan's upping machine learning and finance, Fordham's upping machine learning and finance, and Stony Brook is adding machine learning and finance more so. Like they're all had these things for the last, you know, probably four years now, five years. They're just enhancing the classes and making them better. Um, I will note as well, Stony Brook does have a seminar series that goes throughout the year. I have presented there a couple times. Uh, I've talked to the students. I've networked with them. Their students do good networking events as well. So I went to Princeton's conference and I ran into a handful of Stony Brook students there. Again, location, location, location. Stony Brook tends to have a really good location. Um, academic and rigorous wise, Stony Brook is really focusing on that rigor. Um, I think they spend a lot of time on that and they generate really well qualified students. They could improve on the career services side. Um, another unique piece, which I have been made aware of, I've had discussions with them on, is something called SPIR, S-P-I-R. It is the Strategic Partnership for Industrial Resurgence. It is part of New York City. Um, essentially, they work with um, I believe in New York City. They work with the state there in New York, um, and it covers 50% of the cost of an internship for a corporation. So 
Again, you're wanting a paid internship, you're wanting hands-on real experience. Um, Stony Brook is taking this unique edge that they have uh, and being able to leverage the SPEAR program. And this helps companies hire internships and to make them far cheaper. So Stony Brook's program is well-developed. It's quite rigorous. Again, it's gonna be a little bit more weaker on um, the career services side here. But I think Stony Brook actually prepares you much, much better for model development. That is really their focus and their core here. If you're wanting to learn the math and the stats well-blended in a unique environment close to New York City, um, they're going to be a quite competitive program for that. They're also quite cheap in comparison to many other programs. Um, the total tuition cost for out of state, so anyone who does not live in New York State, is 47,304, and their in-state tuition is only 27,534. So value-wise, if you're looking for a good value, um, you're on a budget, um, Stony Brook is going to be a great option for that while not um, reducing any of the the quality of the program. So those are the four programs that I highly recommend. Um, a few other programs were invited this year. I'm not gonna say who. I wish more programs would accept and be part of this. Um, unfortunately, many, many programs that you're probably heard of don't want to participate because they either don't wanna be transparent with you or two, they have said it does not align with their goals or three, it is too much work for them to be bothered by poor, lonely, old, fancy quant here um, on this quant finance channel. So. Anyways, I highly recommend these four. There are many, many other good programs out there as well, guys. Um, don't just narrow it down to these four, but I do think these four add unique value um, and they are being transparent with the industry, with myself and being public about it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And as always, until next time. Hey.